Welcome back, my friends. It is a cold, rainy, raw day here in the Northeast. So what better day to do a project in the garage? Um, you may have seen in some of my past videos that uh, my grandfather and grandmother, who uh, were heroes to me, passed away recently. And we were cleaning out their house. And I found some incredible vintage tools that I'm, I'm really excited about restoring. So I thought, you know what? Today, why don't we do something a little bit different? Let's take on one of those projects. I found a tool. It's a really simple tool that I've wanted for a long time, but uh, I found a really great vintage one uh, in their garage that uh, I think with some TLC, we could restore into something beautiful. So let's take a look at it. So anytime I'm doing projects with angles, I struggle. I don't know what it is. I can do math all day long. I just absolutely suck when it comes to calculating angles. So a sliding T-bevel is a tool that you can use to kind of cheat anytime you need to copy an angle uh, transfer one angle to another piece of material. So check it out. Here it is. I'm not sure what it is. I think it might be a vintage Stanley. But look at this. I mean, I think I see some brass peeking through there. It's got some rust on here, which I think we're going to be able to take care of. Uh, a brass lock, wooden handle. I mean, you don't find this kind of stuff anymore. No one makes things like this. This, I'm guessing, is probably from the 40s or 50s. And uh, it is super, super handy. You know, you just, you can loosen the lock, put whatever angle you want. You know, it goes either direction. Just lock it down. And then you can transfer that angle to the material that you're working on. So let's see how we can restore this. And it's pretty cold out here. So you can see I got my Mr. Buddy here. And man, this little thing's awesome. This whole little workspace is nice and toasty. So the first thing we're going to do is take this part off. What a nice, look at that solid brass. That's pretty cool, huh? And then we'll take, bolt that. That looks, I don't know if that's brass or if that's steel. It's got some rust on it, so I'm guessing that it's steel. And then there's no spacers or anything, so we should be good. And I think what we're going to do is we are going to give this my favorite treatment. Put this thing in here. Close this guy. And we're going to use good old evapo rust. Not going to let it soak too long because the rust isn't really bad. It's enough to cover it. Maybe an hour or two. Put that off to the side. Let's take a look at the handle. Man, that's pretty, isn't it? These brass pieces. So I got a couple different methods that I've read about for restoring brass uh, with like household cleaners and things. See, there's a little paint overspray on there. That's not the worst, but we can get that off. Clean this wood up. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe let's start with the wood first. So we have some options. Got some steel wool and some 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm trying to decide which one I want to try first. I think I might try the sandpaper. What I don't want to, oh, I also have some scotch brick. That might be too abrasive. And I want to be careful not to really scratch up the brass either. So, let's see if we can uncover the lost beauty of this piece. Look at that coming back to life. Trying to go with the grain as much as I can. Let's see how steel wool does. It's not bad, but I feel like it's almost Burnishing it, not really removing it. Oh, that's like the weather. That is some pretty wood, isn't it? I don't know what it is. Definitely not an expert. It's wood. I have an idea too. So you can put some painter's tape on the areas that you don't want to mar. Let's 
Let's keep working on this a little bit. Apply a little more pressure without worrying about getting the brass. I really want to try to preserve that brass and bring it back to life. There's just something kind of cool about restoring something that was made so many years ago by human hands, not by some machine in a factory in China, you know? Let's keep working on this thing. It's starting to really look nice. It'd be so nice to have this. Every time I use it, I can think about my grandfather. I don't know if he saw or heard in my other videos, I mentioned this, that and my grandmother were depression era people and he actually dug his entire foundation by hand, cleared the land, built his entire house himself. It's pretty incredible. And the house is still standing, still got incredible bones. Just the fortitude and the courage, the strength and the determination it took to do something like that just blows my mind. And the fact that he was a World War II pilot, that's <laughs> even cooler. So, to be able to use this and think about him every time, I don't know, something super special to me. We're getting there. Let's start on the other side. Oh, need some tape. Ah, this little buddy's up. I don't know, a little time and effort and to make these incredible treasures like new again. And then they have some sort of sentimental value too, you know. It's they're really kind of like heritage tools too, you know. I should be able to give this to my son or one of my daughters. And it'll be special for generations rather than some I don't know, cheap Home Depot thing. Maybe that's just me. That's how I feel. Really coming along. I really like to know what kind of wood this is. It feels pretty soft. It's very light. But it doesn't look like pine. I'm guessing that there's going to be some sort of stamp or etching on the sliding. Uh, roll part. I'm hoping we can uncover that. Let's see who made this. Like I said, I think it might be a Stanley. But you never know. Yeah, it might look kind of cool to keep that recess part a little darker. Oh, what about that angry? Maybe we can clean that up. Yeah, it's improving. What do you think? Hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we go a little bit more? I kind of like how it looks now. It'll really have that kind of vintage aesthetic. Oh, I forgot to do ends here. Let's do that gently because this. Something about brass and tools, it just makes them feel like quality, you know? I don't know if it's because it kind of looks like gold or what the reason is. I don't know. It just looks nice. 50, 60 years ago, my grandfather was probably using this to cut rafters for his house. All right. Let's move on to the brass. So I've read online a couple different ways that you can treat brass uh, to bring it back to life. Soapy water, lemons. The salt. And what was the other one? Oh, some toothpaste. I don't know. So I think we're going to try soapy water first. So I've got a tiny bit of Dawn on a wet paper towel. I don't, I don't know. I don't think this is going to do anything. But we're going to try. Dawn is great stuff, but maybe they'll surprise me here. Mm, yeah, it's cleaner. All right. Let's try number two. Lemon juice and salt. 
All right, this is legit. Fresh cut lemon. Some salt on there, I guess for its abrasive qualities. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Just put a little salt on there. Use my fingers. Eh, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I'm not really buying it. Uh, maybe. I think I'm going to just use a little bit of old fashioned steel wool. Oh, look at that. Yep, should have started with that. Look at that. That is really coming back to life. Wow, look at pretty. Loving that. Let's see if we can get these edges. Look at that. Really getting there. Let's see what we can do with this side. Yeah, I'm wondering if that lemon actually was working. Let me throw a little bit of it on there. Maybe I'm just being impatient, not waiting long enough. No, holy cow, look at that. That really worked. Wow. Man. I think that's it. Lemon juice and a little light, not really abrasive steel wool. That is the winning ticket right there. Oh, how pretty is that? Man. I am in love with that. Let's do these. There's like these little plates at the end. I'm guessing it's to keep the wood from splitting. Just loosens a little bit. Coming. A little more lemon. I don't want to get on the wood too much. Is that a minute maybe? Run from that to that. How oh, cool. Alright, let's do the other side. Let it soak. Put this guy in some lemon juice. Let him sit for a little bit. It's cool. I'm really, really excited about it. My grandfather was one of those people who was just, I don't know, man. He was wild. He just knew so much about everything. Now, a lot of people claim to know a lot about a lot of things, and they actually don't know anything. That was not him. He was... Incredible. Look at that. How pretty is that? Let's work on this guy. I think we can bring this thing back to life too with this. It's this lemon juice, that acid really breaks down the, the corrosion and oxidation that's on this brass. It's looking pretty fantastic. See, look at that. Is he even cleaning out the threads in there? Huh. So I think here's what we're going to do. This is done. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. It's clean. It's shiny. Man, you can still see the original marks from when it was made. Casting marks. I'm going to set these off to the side. Our friend here... And the evaporust is really starting to work. So we're going to let him chill, marinate for a bit, and we'll come back in probably like an hour. And we'll see if we can wrap this all up. So while I was waiting for the evaporust to work, something else hit me. I said, wait a minute. 
I have a Dremel with a polishing wheel that I've never used before. Why don't we try that and uh, see what we can make that brass look like. So there's, there's two different size wheels. I'm not sure which one to use. I went with the smaller one first, thinking I could get maybe in the nooks and crannies a little better, but let's give it a try. It feels so much smoother. All right, so it's been about two hours. I put down a piece of butcher's paper. You can see how our evaporust did. Wow, look at that. It actually took a lot of it off. And if we left it in there longer, it would have done more. But look at that, just rubbing with my finger, how much that rust comes off. So I think what we're going to do is gently hit it with the steel wool, because I think that's probably the least abrasive but the most effective. Hoping we can find some sort of maker's mark or something that says who made this. You can see there's a couple of these deeper spots that don't really want to come off, but it's to be expected in something this old. If you let things soak and evaporate too long, it tends to blue the metal. So I don't really want to do that. See if we can do a little bit more. Oh, I think I see something back to that in a second. Let's get as much off as we can. Might not be able to get all of this off, but the majority is coming off. All right. Oh, baby, look at that. Oh, look how nice that came out. And look, you can see something right here. No way. It's the Stanley Sweetheart Edition. The SW on the heart, made in the US de USA, number 225. Can you read that? 12-inch. No kidding. That is cool. This is special. And when you use Evaporust, for whatever reason, you're supposed to just rinse off uh, your piece with water when you're done. Not sure why, but I don't want to find out. So I'm just going to rinse it real quick. Let's take a look at the little bolt, little uh, carriage bolt that was in there. Ah, it came out actually really nice. Look at that. Threads look great. The rust is gone. We'll just hit it with a brass brush real quick. I'm happy with that. I'll rinse that too. Look at that. Pretty nice, huh? Look at all those parts. Doesn't it look amazing? Now, for this last part, this is what I'm excited about. I'm going to treat the handle with a little BLO, boiled linseed oil. I'm put some gloves on. Get these guys out of the way. I'm just going to pour some of this in my hand and just massage it all over this. I want this old wood to soak it up. Or maybe. This stuff smells kind of gross at first, but then I think you kind of get to like it. I don't know why. It sounds weird, but look at it. Make sure we get a lot in the end green. separating a little bit right there but I don't think that'll be a problem and this thing came out amazing I'm so excited and it's such a treasure for my grandfather and grandmother too wow well I want to let it sit and really soak in but I also want to put it back together so I may just lightly wipe it off a little and then add some more later or tomorrow so that this thing really gets restored and refreshed. Look at that color. 
color. Isn't that pretty? Man, it almost like reminds me of a walnut, but I don't, I don't think it is because it's pretty light. But I could be wrong. Like I said, I really don't know woods that well. But, man, it's gorgeous. Let's put it back together. This guy goes in there. I know it matters the orientation. They put the bolt back in because it'll cue up how this thing locks. So that's in, nice and centered. There we go. Let's see where it wants to lock. No, nope, it wants to lock there. That's not right. Back it off. Don't have to take it all the way out. Sit back in. Lock there. Nope, we're close. Turns that way. Ah, almost. Rotate it one more. That's it. That's where you want it to lock. So now, slide. Ah, let's clean up and take a look at this beautiful thing. You know what? Before we clean up, I think to prevent this thing from rusting again, I'm going to hit it with a tiny bit of ballast off. Just to keep it from rusting. Just keep a super, super light coat on there. Rub it in. And that should really preserve this guy. Keep it from tarnishing again. Keep it from rusting. Keep it from getting all nasty again. So there it is. That's the finished product. Look at it. I think it came out beautiful. The brass, you know, and the steel came came out really nice. I think it uh, looks amazing, you know. It's got some character. There. Again is the marking. Stanley Sweetheart. Number 225, 12 inch. And it works great. I mean, it, it operates perfectly. I want to that angle and just lock it down and this thing is tight you know go even harder it's really really tight you can easily transfer an angle man this thing is a total treasure to me total treasure i think it came out great so excited so so excited so thankful all right my friends that's a wrap i hope you enjoyed this i hope maybe you were inspired to Find something from a loved one and restore it. Honestly, this 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 is awesome. I am so excited about how this came out. I mean, take a look at that. It's amazing. The wood, the brass. It's a fantastic tool, which I'm going to use and treasure. I'm going to pass on to my kids. I don't know. I love it. And I'm thankful. You know, we just passed Thanksgiving, reflecting. There's just so much to be thankful for. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this that's going to bring back memories of my grandparents every time I use it. Uh, I'm thankful that I was able to recover it, that it didn't get tossed, go in the garbage. It's priceless to me. I don't know, but I'm thankful. So thanks for watching. Hope you were entertained. I'll see you next time.